Hey guys, today we're going to be going over some more basic stuff. I wanted to do a tutorial on how to do some stuff with characters, like for example put a character together from an existing sculpt, because here we can see somebody has made a chibi robo sculpt, but it's not functioning, you can't control it as a puppet, and they have a puppet standing next to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this sculpt here and we're going to turn it into a actual functioning puppet. So I'm going to go ahead and remix this. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take this guy and turn him into a working puppet. So first off, what we're probably going to want to do is turn on x-ray and connectors to see if he has any connectors set up already. It does not, but he does have each part of his body separated like that. Um, and there's one thing I do want to go over. I think if this is not grouped. It is grouped. Okay. So, you may notice that we have a neck here, a torso, and a pelvis. But this has three parts. So. There is multiple ways we can deal with this, and I'm going to be going over them. Um, you could either make an invisible sculpt or another sculpt like this for another part. Like, for example, this would be the pelvis, this is stomach, and the, this is chest. But in this video, we're going to be going over just working with what we have. So, it seems like everything is here. So let's go ahead and get started. See his arms are already, or his hands are already connected, that's fine. If It's pretty much the same concept. So what we're going to want to do is we are going to, first off, I'm going to explain how the puppet works. So if you open up the properties panel of a puppet using L1 and square, and then go over to the body structure, which is to the left of the cogs, the settings, behavior. And you can see that the puppet has bones. And it assigns parts of the model to these bones. We have left toes, left heel, left hand, left forearm, belly, chest, pelvis, so on and so forth. So what we want to do is we want to take this guy here. And we want to apply his like parts to the model here and have it affected by this bone structure. So first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely ungroup this. So it's in multiple parts. And I'm going to make sure that everything is a separate piece. In this case, I think he has some extra logic for the head for blinking, so we can go ahead and leave that on its own. That's fine. That can stay a group. So what you're first going to want to do is you're going to want to set the proportions of your model, or no, of the puppet to the same proportions of your model that you have. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to go ahead and line them up like this, side by side. And then... There's a nice cool tool in here called the stretch tool. And Media Molecule actually go over this in their actual puppet tutorial that they have in the game. If you did not know that existed, I suggest watching that if you if but if you're still having a hard time, then you can always you can keep watching this if you've already seen it. I kind of have this connector here misaligned, so I'm gonna go ahead and realign it. I don't know if it came like that or if I messed it up, but so you're going to go to the tools, which is the second option in your assembly menu. And you want to get the stretch tool, which is the fourth tool. It looks like a long arrow. And what this is going to allow us to do is proportion the puppet. So first off, I want to set the pelvis at the same level. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the pelvis and shrink it down until it's the bottom is about where the bottom is on the model. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing for his chest. So the top of his chest is the same position with the top of this guy's chest. And that looks about right for the neck. And then looks like the arms are a bit longer on our dude over here. So you can go ahead and stretch out the forearm and the hand. It's going to get you some nice distance. And once we have everything proportioned correctly, we will be able to put together everything as if we're just overlaying. It can be a little bit tricky. You can see I'm going through the floor and I'm readjusting multiple times. I'm trying to get it as identical as possible. If you can't get it perfect, that's fine because you can always reposition the connectors. And there's two ways to do that where you can either actually move the connectors themselves or you could use the option which is this basically you just press triangle to activate reposition connectors mode or you could grab them and again if you can't see the connectors you want to go to the show slash hide section and turn on connectors and turn on x-ray and once you have everything lined up to your liking, we are going to go ahead and begin transferring everything over. So, almost there, I think, for this dude. Alright, that looks good for me. So, what we can do here is we're going to copy it over piece by piece and we're going to group the existing models with the new model or the existing bones which are these existing body parts together with these new ones so in order to do that go ahead and pick up the part I'm going to start with the left arm and then hover over the puppet you're going to scope into the puppet, and then you're going to scope into the arm again. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn up my visual feedback, because you probably have it like this by default. If you don't like this grayscale, that's how you get rid of it, is you turn the uh, visual feedback down to minimal. If you turn it down to moderate, you'll get a blurring effect, so I usually have it on minimal. So now as you can see, it's in the right position, but you can see his old part arm. So most people would probably like scope out of the arm group that we just made and they'd ungroup it. But when you do that, you can see it completely breaks the connectors. So you don't want to do that. Instead, you want to scope back in and you want to delete the old arm. And now you can see that it completely works and it's all connected together like this. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this for his actual arm. And you can see he has a hand already hooked up. So one way we can actually deal with this is we are going to go ahead and scope into the puppet first. And then I'm going to delete his hands on both sides. And this is a good example of being able to edit the bone structure if you for example if your hand or something looks kind of wacky and it's like flying apart that's what I'm gonna do is gonna help a lot for you so let's go ahead and get this new arm grouped in position properly Oh, one thing that I did wrong here is if you have 
it already connected like this and they're not grouped together, you don't want to group them together. You want to select them and then group it, uh, scope in and then group it with the arm. Alright, I think that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the old arm. And as you can see, it doesn't it doesn't match up correctly. So what we can do is we can press triangle on the model and we can reposition the connectors like this. And repositioning the connectors is actually repositioning the um, model and not the connectors. I don't know why it's called repositioning connectors if it repositions the model, but gonna go ahead and once you reposition the model itself you can press circle and then we're gonna make sure that this purple bit is in the elbow because that is the bending part the part that actually bends all right and now one thing you might have noticed is that our hand is no longer functioning that's fine you can delete the old connector and we're going to go ahead and scope back in and scope, pick up the hand and then scope out. So it's part of the puppet group but not part of the hand group. Like this. So let's go ahead and actually reconnect this and we're going to go with the artist design and we're going to use a bolt instead of a ball joint like usual. So go ahead and go open your gadgets menu and we're going to select bolt. And I'm going to go ahead and attach the arm to the hand. And you do the parent object first. So that means uh, basically whatever object you want to control the, the other object is first. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn on grid snap. And I'm going to go ahead and snap this bolt to the grid and make sure that it's aligned up and down. I'm going to turn off the grid and go over to precise move. That's in our guides menu, in our assembly menu. And I'm going to go ahead and move this purple bit, which is the actual connector part, back into place. I'm going to shrink it down so it fits better. And that yellow bit doesn't matter all too much. It's usually just for aesthetic reasons. So you don't have to move that if you don't want to. The most important part is the blue and the purple. And once you have it all set up, you can see that it is all fine. Now, if we keep it the way it is now, you, you notice this is spinning. I'm pretty sure this is a motor bolt. So we could actually set it up to be the same if we wanted to. But you can probably, if we go ahead and walk like this, you can see it flails all around and it's not positioned like the hand should be. I think it'll be easier to see if we're going to walk. I don't know, the FPS might be a little too slow in order to see that. And also, you can see that his blinking animation is not aligned properly, so we can go ahead and fix that. If we turn off preview invisibility, you can see his blinking here. You can select these, and we're going to go ahead and move them back into the head, and we're going to group them with the head as well. Let's try to get this as lined back up as possible. I'm not too sure what this looks like. All I know is that they shouldn't be clipping into the eyeball itself. And I might want to individually do this, I don't know. Hmm. This is frustrating, to say the least. Okay, is that good? No, that's not good, okay. Come on. Okay, well, it doesn't want to cooperate with me, so I'm going to go ahead and scope in 
and go ahead and select actually no what is going on here maybe the size no I don't know maybe his original didn't line up properly or something I don't know maybe if we bring it inwards Hmm. Oh, well, you know what? I don't think this head is actually lined up to the grid properly, or it wasn't designed on the grid, so we're going to have a little bit of an issue. That's fine. I'm trying my best here. There we go. As long as you do your best, that's all we ask. There we go, that's much better. Okay, and now we got the head fixed, which is great. I think, yeah, he put the blinking logic in the puppet microchip, but it's like separate from this, so it's a little bit weird. Um, so, in order to fix this hand, go ahead and open up the puppet properties go onto the body structure and you can see it turn gray here instead of white that's because it doesn't have a right hand right now but we can go ahead and fix that by selecting it and now it should animate properly yeah it's gonna go ahead and sway with the arm a, bit, a lot more also I'm noticing a little bit of animation differences I'm going to go ahead and check how these arms are set up on both sides. Okay, that looks identical to me, so that should be good. I'm not sure why we're getting a little bit different. Maybe the density? I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same steps on the left side of the puppet. It's technically our right. I'm going to go ahead and speed through this here. So, um, one thing I noticed is that the motor bolt is actually causing issues, so we're going to go ahead and change this back to a regular bolt for now. And if we want, we can actually animate that rotation so it doesn't mess with the shape over here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this back up. And everything looks good to me for the arms. One thing I'm kind of worried about is that this body is going to be too thick for it. So we can actually fix that um, by using the stretch tool again. So if we go ahead and scope in, we can actually drag out the chest like so. We're going to go ahead and line it up with our actual body that we have here before we attach it. Mm -hmm. That looks good to me. Maybe bring down the neck. There we go. Alright, and now I'm going to go ahead and scope in by with this shape. And then scope it again. And this is attaching it to the chest right now. Then we can go ahead and delete the old chest model. Alright, and we're so close. Now we're going to go ahead and bring in the torso. Do the same thing. Get it all lined up properly. Then delete the old model. Alright, and basically from here on, it's pretty simple. Go ahead and pick up the leg. Do it for the leg. 
three gold leg model. Maybe readjust some joints here. All right, um, looks like we are a little bit too low, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up our body a bit until we get what we want down here. We're going to take this big bulky thing for the foot and go ahead and attach it the way we like it. And delete the old model. And as you can see, uh, first of all, the connector is a bit off, but we also have these extra toes. So you can go ahead and delete them. It's not going to affect the puppet movement that much. Really at all, actually. If there's anything on your puppet that you don't have in the model, you can go ahead and delete it. Like if the actual puppet doesn't have it. I mean, if the actual puppet has it, and then your model doesn't have it, you can delete it from the puppet. There's not going to be that many repercussions, if any. I'm going to make sure all of our bones are still intact, and it does not look like they are. So we can go ahead and you can delete them if they aren't set up properly. And then you can go ahead and select them again. Hmm. That's a bit weird. Why is this happening? What is it connected to? Why is it connected to the hand? Oh, you know what? I think it's because we accidentally retargeted. We, when we're, when I was moving this, I actually put it, I moved it while I was focusing on this. So it made the leg parented to the hand on accident, so let's see if we can actually fix this now. Is this fine? Yes, this is fine, okay. And as you can see, something like this might end up happening. That's probably because your model is set to collide, but you don't actually want that. So if you have groups, this is going to be a real nightmare to do this, but you need to go through each and every part and set them to not collidable. And as you can see, these arms are groups, so this is going to be a little bit... This is going to be pretty tedious. Um, it doesn't take too much time, but you might want to save yourself the effort um, and just make them not collidable by default. And you also want to make sure that they're not set to... I think we don't want them movable. I'm not sure. No, I think movable is fine. Okay. Yeah, movable should be fine. And now we get a guy that's just standing still for now. But if we go ahead and open this up... Look, he's walking! And he's also running. And his left arm is a bit messed up for the run animation. So I'm going to go ahead and go through on how to fix that after we finish him up. So now it's just the head and the neck that we need to put on. It's not going to be too difficult. Why is this a group? Why is it what? Okay. Am I missing something? I don't I don't know how they grouped it with nothing. 
but that's a bit funny. <laughs> Okay, gonna go ahead and connect it to the existing neck, then delete it. Might wanna oop, reposition this if you need to. Didn't get it properly aligned, so. Now time for the head. Um, this is gonna be a new system. Nuisance probably because of the eyeballs. Yeah, there are groups within groups within groups, of course. And once you get head on long collidable, go ahead and stick it on there. Go ahead and delete the old model now. And maybe, oh no, we already did that, okay. Well, the bones are set up properly. And if we go ahead and preview invisibility, and we got proper chippy robo all set up. I mean, his blinking is a bit off, but that should be, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, if you, Group them before you set them up. It's not going to be too bad. If I can freeze it on the frame where it's like this, I can probably fix it. Yep. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect if you don't care about it that much. I mean, this is really just for showing off on how to do it. But now we have a Fully working puppet. Again, our arm animation got a little bit messed up because of the hand issue that we had earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and if you're using a deluxe puppet, these buttons actually make animation states. So we can actually set this up to match properly. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Again, the um, this is only really for the um, deluxe puppet. I think the regular puppet has running states as well, but it's not, they don't have jumping states. So you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Okay. There we go. Now you can notice that the uh, head movement isn't perfect. We get the neck popping out. That's fine. You can always make it so there's more model or you could edit this to have limits. And I believe this is going to make it so it, we can't overextend our neck that far. You, you you would have to twiddle with it quite a bit, I believe, if we go ahead and go in here. Probably, yep, okay. So about 15 degrees, 13 degrees of movement is what we want. That's not a lot, but hey, he doesn't have much of an egg, so. <laughs> yeah, it's all on his head. There we go. And you can't really see the belly. Um, if you can see the belly on your puppet at, after doing this, and or any body part that you shouldn't be able to see because it shouldn't exist, you can go ahead and open up the Sculpture Properties and then go to the Physical Properties tab, which is the Newton's Cradle. And then turn off Visible. And it'll make it so that body part is not visible. But yeah, this is how you make a basic puppet. And 
The only other thing I can think of that I said I would do is set up the animations for this hand. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly go over that. Just, I'm going to get a timeline out. And I'm going to, well actually, I think maybe, specifically for this guy, I don't want to make this an animation tutorial. So if we just make these motor bolts and then turn off the uh, hand bone in here, it might work. Yeah, that, that looks like it's working. Yeah, that, that's working. So, now we got a nice Chibi Robo character. One last thing I want to do is, if you open up the Puppets microchip at its base here, with L1 and X, it's, you, depending on the puppet you're using, you'll have sound effects, or a sound effect uh, microchip. And in here, you get multiple jump, land, sound effects. And you can go ahead and replace these to make a much better sounding character, um, depending on what kind of character you have. So if we go to sound mode and then search, search sound effects, you can go ahead and scope out here. Uh, you'll have MM sound effects right here. And what we're looking for is characters. And you'll have jumps, footsteps, and lands. And in here we have much different kind of jumps and stuff like that. Debug sounds much better for this. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that jump. And we have lands. Debug sounds a lot better for this. Especially considering that Chibi Robo is really small. Okay, and that's a bit it's a bit loud. You can also affect the sounds and the animation of the puppet in here. Well, not the sounds, but the animation specifically. But this tutorial has gone on for quite long enough. Um, I wanted to make it a little bit shorter, but I couldn't explain everything in time. Um, actually, I think when I shortened, uh, shortened down some of the grouping by making it sped up, it might, it might be less than 40 minutes. So uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you had a, uh, hope you were able to follow through this tutorial. I want to thank you for everyone that actually finishes watching <laughs> all the way through. And I hope you all like, comment, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.